is Raven from Close Enough Cosplay. And today I've got for you, it's a cosplay breakdown video, but I mean, I'm not wearing a costume this time. Um, I thought I would break down how I create my belly dancers. For any of you guys who want to make belly dancers of your favorite character and just don't really know where to start with it. So currently I have four belly dancers. Um, three of them have pictures right now, the fourth one not yet. So I have Umbreon from Pokemon, Loki from Marvel, Adina, Ed, Adina Elric, which is Edward Elric from Full Metal Alchemist, and then my newest one is Vaporeon from Pokemon. But Vaporeon doesn't have any photos yet. So with the making of the four belly dancers that I have, there was a certain method that I used for each one, and today I'm going to share that method with you. It's just three easy things that I believe will help you guys whenever you are creating your own belly dancer of a person, a Pokemon, a robot, whatever you want. So number one is looking at color schemes. Now this applies to any character. When you look at the character, what are the colors that are the most common? Like, say it's a Pokemon, what are their main colors? For Umbreon, it's black and gold. For Vaporeon, it's about, it's two shades of blue and gold. And if you're looking at a human or something that's not an animal of some sort, say Loki and Adina, for example, Loki's colors are green, gold, and black. And then for Adina, I went with black, red, and silver. Figuring out a color scheme will give you an idea of, like when you're getting together pieces, like what the color should be, what can you make one color, not another, because I also want to know what colors are more dominant. Like an example I'm going to give is for Umbreon. The main color I went with was black because Umbreon's full body is black. And the gold was more the accents, like the stuff on the chest, the coins on the hip scarf, and the sequins going down the skirt. So it's good to know color scheme. The second thing to pay attention to is personality. This mainly falls into for your non-animal characters. Because for Pokemon, you can give them whatever personality you want. But I feel like if you know the personality of the character, that will help you in making your belly dancer costume. So taking Loki and Adina, for example, I tried to bring out their personalities for Loki and Edward, the males, based uh, based on the personalities, how I made the costumes. So Loki, for example, um, as we know, Loki wants to be the king of Asgard. He is a very, he's very intelligent, silver-tongued, and just when I think of a female Loki, I think of her just being majestic and regal and just, I am above you all, because I mean, the ultimate goal of Loki is to take over our planet. So, whenever I designed Loki, she had to be regal as crap. So, like the bra is made with like gold trim and like green ribbons. I did have a plain black skirt to go with the hip scarf. And like for jewelry, I had big pieces like these big gold earrings, this big ring that I had, a gold body chain. And of course the makeup is much more dramatic with like winged out eyeshadow, winged out eyeliner, and all of that fun jazz. And then comparing to Adina, now as we know, Edward in Full Metal Alchemist, he's not like Loki at all. He is, well, one, he's very, very loyal. He is very determined, very hard work, and of course, very, very hot tempered, <laughs> especially if you call him short. So comparing Edward to Loki, Edward would be a lot simpler, which is why for Edward's costume design, um, the top is not as dramatic looking. The bottom is not like a full length skirt. It is a shorter skirt with leggings because I feel like even if Edward was a female having to wear a skirt, she still would wear leggings so that she would be able to move better because motion is very important. And her makeup is not as dramatic. It's a little bit of like black and silver and a little bit for the lips and that's really all 
Athena is, so. Athena is way less dramatic than Loki. Um, and that's just based off of personality. So whenever you're making your character, whoever it is, um, look into their personality and think, how can I express their personality through this costume? Third tip is character detail. Now this applies to any kind of thing, creature, non-creature, whatever. Um, little details that the character has that you should try to incorporate into your costume will really help to bring it out. So, for example, Umbreon's main feature, well, main details are the ears and the gold rings, which I paint on my forehead and on my shoulders. Because as you know, Umbreon, of course, has the ears and also has gold rings on the forehead and along the body. You can also make a tail if you'd like to. But that's completely optional. I personally don't, but anyone else can. For Vaporeon, the main ones I looked at were, of course, the fins and the white at the neck. And then the tulip skirt that I used, I pinned in the back, or one of my friends helped me pin it, to look like a tail. But that is obviously completely optional. For Loki, the number one detail that I felt had to be there was the horns. So, and right now I'm remaking the horns, so, um, because I felt that without the horns, would not be as easily recognized. And then what most people don't realize is the blue gem that I have in the center is supposed to be a tesseract. Just because I'm like, Loki has the staff and carries the tesseract around anyway, so cool. And then for Edward, for Adina, the main things I did was the auto mail arm, which I built for my normal Edward. Um, but if you don't want to build one, you don't have to. And also the watch, which I wear around the neck because I don't think it would be as easy around the skirt and of course it you can see it better. So yeah, those are my three tips on how to transform a character you love into a belly dancer. Within those guidelines of color scheme, personality, and accessories, details, whatever, you can do so many different ways. You can jab it up however you want. Pants, skirts, cholis, bras, hip scarf of all sorts of ways, all sorts of jingle jangles. It's all up to you. So I hope that this video has helped you guys and I hope that your costumes turn out awesome. I would love it if you would, like if you make a costume, but if you make a belly dancer costume, if you see this video, please tag me in your pictures. I would absolutely love to see them because they look so cool. Um, my Tumblr and my Instagram are both close enough cosplay. So if you make a belly dancer, tag me in it. I would love to see it. It would be so cool. So I hope you guys have a wonderful day and I hope you guys have fun creating your belly dancers.